In this video, we're going to complete example four. But before we get into that example, we're going to talk about scheduling on a network diagram. And sometimes we're given a length of time or duration required for an activity to be completed. So down below, I have a few images and each tradie has a different activity to complete. We have our carpenter who will be putting the walls up. We'll call that activity A. Let's say it's going to take 72 hours for this job to be completed or this activity to be completed. Sometimes I see the length of time written inside of brackets and sometimes I see it after a comma like so. Let's look at the electrician. So after the walls have been put up, the electrician needs to do the wiring. We'll call that activity B. Let's say that the wiring takes 24 hours. And finally, the plasterer needs to put the walls up once the wiring has been done. So we'll call that activity C and let's say that that's going to take 48 hours to complete. So what does scheduling look like on a network diagram? Well, we start with a start vertex and then we have edge A coming out from that. So we could have A with the number 72 in brackets next to it, or we could have it as A comma 72. The number 72 represents the weight of the edge. So once activity A is complete, we can move on to activity B. This time we'll use a comma, B comma 24. And then once activity B is complete, we move on to activity C, which is 48 hours. And then we finish our project. So the only thing that really changes when you use scheduling on a network diagram is that you're going to have these weighted edges. This is really useful for companies. They need to know how long it's going to take to complete a project. And once they know that, they can estimate costs and make informed choices when buying equipment or hiring staff. Anyway, let's get into example four now. So example four is an example that we've completed in an earlier video, except we've changed this example a little bit just to make it a little harder. It says that Grant and his friends would like to build a gaming computer and they would like all the same components that were mentioned in the previous example, as I said before, except they would like to purchase a high end graphics card. And we can see that down here. We've got our graphics card that they need to install into their computer. Now to install the graphics card, someone needs to drive to the computer store, pick it up, then install it. So we can see here, we've got the picture of the car. Someone's got to go pick it up and then they install it. And note, they cannot install the graphics card until after the motherboard has been installed. So you can see this arrow showing that it can't really be installed until this point here. And we've got a precedence table on the next slide that we're going to convert into a network diagram. So when we look at this precedence table, this is the procedure that we need to follow in order to build this computer. And you can see we've got a column called duration, which is in minutes, and it just shows how long it takes to complete each activity. So installing the RAM on the motherboard only takes one minute. All right, let's put down our start vertex. And you might notice that there are three activities, activities A, B, and C, which do not have any immediate predecessors. So we'll put that down. Activities A, B, and C. All right, and because this is a practical example, let's have a quick look at what these are. So we're installing the RAM on the motherboard. We're installing the CPU on the motherboard. So you don't need to do anything before that. And activity C, pick up graphics card from local computer store. So because it's a, a group of mates, one of them has probably gone to the computer store, so he's driving down to the computer store. 
while someone else installs the RAM and someone else installs the CPU. So these three activities can actually occur at the same time. Now we need to put the duration down. We've got 1, 1 and 15 for activity C. So I'm going to use commas. It's A, 1, B, 1 and C, 15. And we'll tick them off. Now moving on to activity D, we're installing the fan on top of the CPU. And that has to ha happen after activity B. We have to install the CPU before we install the fan. So we need to complete activity B and then carry on with activity D. And you can see that activity D has a duration of three minutes. So we'll go D comma three. And we'll tick off activity D. Now moving on to activity E, we're going to screw the motherboard into the case. And we can't do that until activities A and D are complete. So we need to install the RAM and also put the fan on top of the CPU before we screw the motherboard into the case. So we need to make sure that activities A and D are connected to the same vertex. like so, and then activity E can come out from that vertex, activity E, and we'll tick activity E now. All right, moving on to activity F, we need to attach the power cable to the motherboard, and you can't do that until activity E is complete, so you need to screw the motherboard into the case before you attach the power cable. So we'll complete Activity E with the vertex, and then activity E F, sorry, follows on from that. And we can tick activity F, and I'm just noticing I, I haven't been putting my durations down. So activity E was 13 minutes, so I need to write E, comma 13, and activity F was only one minute, so F, comma 1. All right, moving on to activity G. We're going to screw the DVD drive into the case. And you can't really do that until activity F is complete. So we're going to finish off activity F, and then activity G comes out from that point. And we'll tick that off. We can also see that activity H comes after activity F. So we'll have activity H coming out from that point and activities G and H have a duration. So G has a duration of three and H has a duration of four. And we'll tick off H. Now moving on to activity I, we need to plug the graphics card into the motherboard. And that needs to come after activities C and F. The reason for that is we need someone to pick up the graphics card first, that's activity C, and we need to make sure that the power cable has been attached to the motherboard, activity F. You might notice that we're going to need a dummy activity in this situation. Why is that? Well, as we've mentioned earlier, sometimes you get shared immediate predecessors. And we've got three activities that share the immediate predecessor of F. But there's also an immediate predecessor that is not shared, and that's activity C here. It's not shared by these three activities. All right, so I've got to somehow make activity I come after both activities C and F. So what I'll do is I'll extend activity C for a little bit here, out to here, and I know that activity I needs to come after activity C. Activity I, which has a duration of two minutes. I also need activity I to come after activity F. So I need a dummy activity to connect activity F here. Because the dummy activity 
has a weight of zero, it means that activity F is basically directly connected to this point. Now we can say that activity I has the immediate predecessors C and F. So we can tick that off. All right, activity J comes after activity G. So we'll complete activity G. And activity J comes out from that. Activity J has a weight of two or a duration of two minutes. And we'll tick that off. Then activity K comes after activity H. So if we complete activity H, activity K comes after that. And activity A has a duration of two minutes. We can now tick that one off. And finally, activity L, where we screw the cover of the case once everything's been installed, it comes after activities I, J, and K, which we can quite easily connect up like so. And then activity L comes out from there. So activity L has a duration of three minutes. And then we finish off our project. All right, now I quite often talk about how I prefer to have uh, straight edges if I can. So just having a look here, I reckon I could swap edges B and D with edge A. Now I have straight edges here. I also want to straighten edge C. And it's not going to be too hard for me to now straighten edges I and J. Now that we've drawn our network diagram, I would like to talk about how this can be useful for Grant and his friends as they plan this project. And what's really good here is they can assign activities to each other. For instance, someone could be working on activities B and D while someone else is working on activity A. We can also have someone completing activity C or someone driving to the computer store to pick up the graphics card while other people are starting to build the computer. If we look at this vertex here, we can see that one person is installing the RAM, which is only going to take one minute, while the other person is installing the CPU and the CPU fan. So whoever's installing the RAM, after they've installed it, they're going to have to wait till this person completes their job before they can complete activity E. If we look back at activity C, where someone has gone to pick up the graphics card, by the time they get back or get to this vertex here, they're actually going to have to wait. They need to wait till all of these activities have been completed before they start putting the graphics card into the computer, or sorry, into the motherboard. When you follow the edges with the greater weight and add them up, it actually comes to 1, 4, 17, 18 minutes before we get to this vertex. Whoever's picking up the graphics card knows that even though it takes 15 minutes to go pick it up, they've actually got 18 minutes before they can install it anyway. So they can be a few minutes late and, and not hold up the project. You can see that a diagram like this would be really useful for a company that has really strict deadlines and needs to make sure that projects are completed within a certain time frame. Anyway, that concludes example four. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.